political honesty as he lied about going to college on a full ride, graduating with three degrees on the top half of his class, and being the top political science student. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship. On a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Whoa, that's exciting. Wow. Oh, no. Like, when he says oh Antifa is not an organization. Biden, Biden, what's going on? Oh my goodness, like this is too much for me to take in. Oh. Okay. Time, yeah, Awaken with JP. Are you ready for this, guys? Let's now get into the heart of the message. Let's warm ourselves up with a little bit of laughter here, but also some troops, right? Let's do it. Ooh, pizza. Hey, right. friends and family. After getting more popular vote than any other dementia patient in U.S. history, Joe <gasps> Biden certainly become very well known for being a great president. The name of this is Brandon Stens' Most Honest Lies So Far. Well... Let's let him let him speak. Oh, took a little something out of my soul just saying that. And he's also known for obviously being super honest in ways that aren't accurate relative to reality. So accordingly, let's take a look at President Brandon's top 10 biggest lies so far. And at the end of this video, I'll share why it's okay that he lies and how none of it's his fault. Biden said that January 6 rioters killed two police officers. He made this claim while he was giving a speech, AKA trying to read off a teleprompter at his alma mater, the University of Delaware, where he looked no less than 190 years old, as you can see here. Now that's at least an improved lie from a speech he gave in Wisconsin, where he implied that rioters killed five police officers. Now the reality is that the rioters, many of whom were peacefully led into the Capitol building by security guards, didn't kill anyone. Even though the media tried to frame it differently, one Capitol Police officer died on January 7th after a medical examiner determined that he died from two strokes. And a Metropolitan Police officer and a Capitol Police officer both killed themselves following January 6th and we're still awaiting word to see if their suicides were caused by themselves or the Clintons. So that leaves zero <laughs> as the exact- Oh my goodness. Okay guys, I'm just trying to take this all in because Oh, he is seething with sarcasm. <laughs> and sarcasm. So, Ooh, now, you know, uh -huh. out of him. Oh, it becomes so second nature this for him. Just, this one's, a, I can't lie, it's a little harder for me because as much as I don't subscribe, you know, I know that these things are true. It's the, I, you know, I'm a people person. So, mm -hmm. you know, when he makes certain comments, it makes my heart hurt yeah. because I just think we shouldn't talk about people. But he is... It's hilarious, but yeah. I can't laugh because it's political with a lot people. of truth in it. And some of this yeah. I've heard myself. Yeah. So he kind of compiled this list here, but I think I don't think it's an attack personally on the person in office here. This is just saying this is what's going on, and some of it makes a lot of sense to me if you were to ask me. It does. It does. So yeah. we're getting to the heart of the message. <laughs> the heart of the message. Yeah. Stop. Don't talk about him though. Be nice. I'm trying <laughs> not. To, I'm like, Ooh, yeah. Can you just say that about? Yeah. He's still God's child. The number of police officers that rioters killed on January 6th at the Capitol. However, we can confirm that the number of protesters who have been illegally imprisoned as political prisoners following January 6th is much higher than zero. Number two, withdrawing from Afghanistan while claiming a Taliban takeover is unlikely, and then the Taliban takes over immediately. Watch. <laughs> Back in July, you said a Taliban takeover was highly unlikely. Was the intelligence wrong or did you downplay it? There was no consensus. You go back and look at the intelligence reports. And once the Taliban took over, shockingly, Biden claimed that military advisors didn't warn him against withdrawing troops from Afghanistan. However, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, head of U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth McKenzie, and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin which I guess being top military advisors would qualify them as military advisors, all testified before the Senate that they recommended maintaining a presence of US troops in Afghanistan and that their input was received by Biden. But then Biden made two wrongs a right with a third wrong when he said, if there's Americans left, we're gonna stay to get them all out. And well, if by leave no man behind, you mean leave men behind, then yeah, he's honest. And I guess in this Afghanistan piece is Biden's second biggest lie. There were 
Wait, so people were left behind? Yes, American troops were left behind in the middle of a war in uh, in Iraq. So they they pulled out and didn't make sure everybody was gone? They didn't make sure everybody was gone. But this was in the middle of a war. But what this also did, the Taliban... Which of was course, like, use those people. They well, they, they went. Sorry. They begin to per, kind of hurt their not only the American soldiers but also the the people that were there. They were trusting in the American soldiers to, to protect, protect them. them. So it's just like you pull out and leave everybody to themselves. It was bloodshed after that. Oh yeah, I know. I knew that was going to happen. That was very. I mean, it's just. Yeah, you just don't do that in the middle of a war. But again, having gotten counsels from you know his political advisors and mm. not listening to that it makes you wonder who is really running the show then because if these are the people you're supposed to be trusting for your with making decisions that are in leadership position overseeing the army and yeah, the war if you don't listen agendas. to them yeah. so who are you listening to these are good things to think about you know? anyway. hmm. Mm. okay here we go actually three lies within this one lie but they all left people dead but i think there was a real good chance that biden was identifying as telling the truth when he was lying about afghanistan so unless you're a biologist you better just shut up and we can identify we tell we're doing anything nowadays that's just really... a way to escape anything any, any way to escape reality just identify of it as doing something right right yeah <laughs> yeah i think what's really hard for me with this is because while he is you know, proving a point with the reverse, the reverse skill yeah. tactic sarcasm that he uses. It's really sad because people died yeah. and it's all because people just don't care about people anymore. And mm-hmm. they are like one person said they are working under the rule of evil. They're working under Satan and they just don't care about people. The love mm-hmm. of many will wax cold. Like yeah, yeah. who, how many families are devastated now because mm-hmm. of what has transpired over mm-hmm. time. And we know, we know that there is intentionality. There are, are things in place that are intentionally provoking these divisions, mm-hmm. provoking these wars mm-hmm. and they're fueling them. And yeah. it's just really sad. Yeah. There's a lot it's of really yeah, intentionality, a lot of self-interest and also, yeah, you're right. Mm. Unless you want to be censored. Number three, Biden claims there was no when he took office. Hi, I was born in 1981 and I attended Woodstock in 1969. Uh, bro, that math doesn't add up. Yeah, that's because math is racist. In spite of the world passionately not caring, Biden made sure the world knew he was on December 21st, 2020. Biden then took office on January 20th 2021. I'm not totally sure. Is 2020 before or after 2021? Like, don't you love how that that's how they're making the world now, where you're like so confused about basic, <laughs> basic. foundational truths, basic about basic, reality. yeah, the basic <laughs> components of the foundations yeah. of reality are yeah. now like somehow this in this cloud of yeah. in this abyss of uncertainty. Yeah. And again, God is basic. God is not the author of confusion. So this confusion yeah. is not from God. And I think when we lost sight of just like you said, basic reality, it's just it's bad. Basic. It's one thing, you know. Basic foundational truths. Yeah. One plus one <laughs> equals two. Fundamentals. Twenty comes after twenty one. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> you sound uh, like JP for a minute. <laughs> I don't know, but Biden sure seems honest. But luckily, Biden's never told any other lies about the <coughs> Oh, except, but number four, Biden says he won't make <coughs> mandatory. And then he makes a good yeah. old fashioned <coughs> mandate. But who cares if he lied about this? All that's at stake are your freedoms, liberties, and the US Constitution. Yeah. Not really a big deal if you're ushering in a communist agenda. Mm-hmm. So let's move on. Now it's time for a little nostalgia. I- that Ushering one always in a communist is, agenda. Is, that is good to hear. It's so important. Like yeah. while he's funny, it's so powerful, and he's very keen, and awesome. he has taken the realities of what's happening. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to really pay a close attention. Yeah. So many people just aren't paying attention. We they just to. are looking at different things that they like, or just because they are a diehard mm-hmm. Democrat, just because you know these things that have shape their thought process like it's time for thought processes to be broken down that's right that's we right. have to break them down that's right yeah and we have to reason from cause to effect and also learn from history and i think we are repeating it clearly 
Yeah, I what Mark said, sad thing is Brandon's brain is so far gone that he actually believes his own Click lies. Click the oh, sorry. Instead. I think there's a Bible verse that says that he will cause them. God said, I will cause them to believe that believe their own delusions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's because you've chosen to live and to believe a lie for so long. And yeah. oftentimes we do it too yeah. in areas in our own life where very we dangerous. have to be very careful. Sometimes I the know. hardest person to be honest with is ourselves. Yeah. And you can tell a lie so long that you begin mm -hmm. to live, in the, live in the reality of a lie. Yeah. Which lie is not even real. And that is and that is <laughs> that the reality. Is dangerous. And that's dangerous. And that's the reality of anyone who doesn't accept Christ. Yeah. Because it is a false reality that mm -hmm. we do not have a savior it's a false reality that mm. we don't have someone who cares about us and loves us and that we're valuable yeah so it's really important to know that we can even be living in our own false reality and yeah. so while we're looking at others we do have to check in with ourselves like what is in my world and be praying and asking god mm. open my eyes and make me willing to be made willing to hear you because yeah. we don't even like we're born mm -hmm. with a propensity with a desire for unrighteousness yeah, to tell lies. a desire to, mm -hmm. to yeah to tell lies uh, even to ourselves mm -hmm. so it takes a spiritual yeah. divine power to get us to a point where we and we have to literally pray the prayer lord make me willing to be made willing yep one lady had taught me that prayer and she's like andrea make you gotta pray this prayer make me willing to be made willing and yeah. i'm just like since she told me that and taught me that I understand my natural flesh reaction is for myself and for what feels good and not mm -hmm. always for what truth is. Yeah. So we have to sometimes pull ourselves out of our own lies mm -hmm. to get planted in the truth that God wants us to be in. That's right. That's right. You know, it's one thing you're struggling with a particular habit, but it's another thing you start to live in it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I like how this guy say, we're going to make this statement quickly. All right, this is William Shakespeare. He said it this way, and I love how he puts it. He says, this above all, to thine own self, be true. Mm -hmm. Be true. You know, be careful how you lie to yourself. And I think what's happening in the administration, and I hate to get into the politics, the politics of it because there's so much more going on than what I understand. But there's a whole lot of lies, though. And we go to the pump and we look, we pay in the money. And then you're telling us the economy is doing perfectly fine. I'm like, bro, are you yeah. serious right now? Like we went, we went to Walmart the other day. <laughs> like we go to Walmart. I went to Walmart with my mom just to buy a few things in the groceries. It's like $250,000, $250, huh? Mercy, not thousand. dollars I don't want to go to that, that far with the yeah, lie. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it's just like $250. We didn't even For get half a cart of a cost. stuff. They on average, would have cost 60, yeah, on average, 60 and 80, uh, depending on which stores you go yeah. and shop. But but I'm like, that's the reality right here. <laughs> like, like, Gia, our island will be our present reality eventually. Yeah. It's not gone out the window. It's but shame. it's so important. I love that what you said. We have to really, and, and it starts with prayer and self-reflection and mm -hmm. really just asking God to show us. Because yeah. oftentimes... When you live a life for so long, you don't even know you're in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's so important. And this is where, like, when people learn to accept Christ in the gospel, it's yeah. like, oh, I've been living a lie my whole entire life thinking that I had to figure this all out on my own. It's like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You got, there's peace out there that passes even your own understanding, understanding ready yeah. for you to hold on and to. And I think it's a good point you made here. I'm going to save that for the end because I have a little testimony to share about somebody. There's a, there's a greater lie that you believe. Um, especially about salvation that we also need to address. All right, let's listen. As we throw it back to Biden in the 1980s, as he's practicing his stellar political honesty, as he lied about going to college on a full ride, graduating with three degrees on the top half of his class, and being the top political science student. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with wow. three degrees from mm -hmm. undergraduate school and 165 credits, only needed 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he wow. does not have three degrees from college and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Whoa, that's exciting. Wow. Oh, no. Like, why do people feel like they have to portray themselves to be this person to I other guess. people? Why can't we just be okay with our greatness, our lack of greatness, yeah. with who we are? 
What why did we? I think most people. What a what, lie. We don't but even have to. He was lying young. That was there he was no been... men. There was no mental issue back then, as it was. Well, there was obviously to do. something. There's something now wrong. we can say, but well, no, I, I'm not saying now. I'm saying there's something. But wrong. even back then, he was younger. That's just what you're trying to say. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, for him to carefully put that together without, you know, saying like these are well thought out words. Mm-hmm. It's one thing you're under pressure. You know, and you just say one thing and you miss, you know, you, you didn't realize what you just said. Here. We don't know how he got to that conclusion. He could have made that up while he was standing right there. He very well could have. I, there's a lot of people is, who can lie on the spot. That is so true. Yeah. And that's even more disturbing. If you it can, is. If you can think through it. It's like premeditated murder here. Like we, you're thinking that like us, like us, a first degree type of lie. It's one thing you, you know, you didn't mean to because say it. Because if you think through it, I, what I'm, what I guess what I'm trying to say is, is like, I think he's so used to lying and he's so in, in in his mind, and this is just an, an assumption, that, that, that he just talks know. to make things sound good. Yeah. And that's why he can get fact checked, like Mark said, in two minutes, <laughs> because he doesn't even think his lies through. Like, how can I cover this one up? Like, they've got every, is, like, the colleges have the notes. <laughs> they've got all the, like, this stuff you can't. Well, I think sometimes we Hi. probably at that time we probably weren't thinking people were gonna look into that kind of stuff. That's what I you mean. Know, so he's just that. like rambling at the mouth. Yeah. We don't know whether he <sighs> thought crazy. it through or just came off the top, but it's what you can see is from back then. Yeah, that there's back a lesson. then shows the character that is that is true of the person. So then when we started appointing him into political offices and spaces to be a leader, who did you guys, did we know Dude, that he know. was a liar from the beginning and felt like he had to say things to put himself on a pedestal Yeah. versus being common with us? Now, you makes you wonder, like, which one of his statements are actually true? Do you understand what I mean? It's because scary. this is what he does. This was his norm. This is so scary, though. It could have. It must be. Not must yeah. be. But and it, I'm not, it was attacking, something he did I'm not attacking character, but if you have... If you have that type of mindset as an individual, it's very concerning, you know? Yeah, I don't know his daily thoughts or prayers to cast judgment. But what I do know, what what we see in our face is that there's that. I don't know if there was an apology put through or anything in between this time frame. I'll take an apology. I don't necessarily want an apology, but I mean like even a repentance. I don't know what he's done from that time space Mm -hmm. to this time space. So I'm not judging him. What I'm saying is when we're looking at these things, when we see if he was capable of doing that then... And he's still lying now. This is where we have to question why do we keep him in office so long? And this is where we have to really start digging and doing our work. Yeah, we got to ask. And I'm talking about me. Yeah. And the good question is now he makes you wonder who is really in charge. Exactly. Who's really in charge and what is he saying that's true? Is any of it valid? Mm. Exciting. But truth isn't a part of Marxism. So it's like he was being true to Marxism when he lied. And I like that honesty. Number six, Biden claims he was arrested as a teenager for standing up for civil rights. Yeah, and I used to be Superman, Joe, but I quit saving people from burning buildings because like you, I decided to burn down the country instead. Spoiler alert, Biden was never arrested for standing up for civil rights. Even his arms of censorship couldn't cover up this obvious lie, as PolitiFact rated Biden's claim as false. And the Washington Post gave it four Pinocchios. But I'm sure standing up for civil <laughs> rights would have prepared Biden really well for passing the crime bill. And what's crazy, Washington Post and Politisat, they are a democratic um, news mm-hmm. network. So they themselves come out and say, no, nah, man, you lie. Oh, I see what you mean. That yeah, really yeah, yeah. speaks volume then. Wow. 1994 and forgiving the eulogy at the funeral of a KKK leader while present day treating the civil are you, rights are philosophy. Are you serious? He gave the eulogy? Wow. Eulogy at the funeral. That, that can be real. I need to look that one up. That's got to be a lot. Really well for passing the crime bill in 1994 and forgiving the eulogy at the funeral of a KKK leader while present day treating wow. the civil rights philosophy of Martin Luther King <laughs> Jr. of judge a person based on the content of their character, not the color of their skin, like toilet paper. Next lie, please. Biden said his Build Back Better agenda would cost zero dollars and add zero dollars to the national debt. I mean, that seems likely. Wouldn't some kind of charitable organization be implementing this kind of thing? But according to the Congressional Budget Office, if Biden got everything he wanted in his Build Back Better agenda, it would cost over three trillion dollars. Maybe he meant like the cost would be zero dollars, but the price would be three and a half trillion (laughs) dollars. 
because though <laughs> cost and price have the same meaning, they have very different spellings. <laughs> Number eight. Biden denies that Antifa exists. Yeah. He made the claim while looking like a deer caught in the headlights during a debate with President Trump. Watch. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you Antifa is an idea, not an organization. I mean, I think that's true. And for an organization that doesn't exist, here's a look at one of their websites, rosecityantifa.org. Oh, and the .org stands for organization, which helps <laughs> further prove that Biden's right when he says Antifa oh is not an organization. Biden, Biden, what's going on? Oh my goodness, like this is too much for me to take in. Oh. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh. Well, how did Hi, we Bill. How did we Thank you for it? being did, a new subscriber. How did we buy into this? Oh, man. This is problematic. How long has this been going on? Oof. This is so disturbing, wow. though. But it's, it good is, to, it's, it's good to know it. It's good to know. This is where enlightenment mm -hmm. comes through. Yeah. Through and, and then anything that we need to go fact check, we should go fact check. We don't just take another man's words. We then go pray and look and, mm -hmm. and intelligently figure it out for ourselves which is just what my husband said he's like i'm gonna have to look into that to just yeah. see the validity of it because a lot of people are putting out stuff but wow that is disturbing though wow all but, this was so disturbing i, I want to know how do uh his party how do how do they actually cover some of this stuff up well this obviously stuff, this stuff are out there people are knowing about yeah what them. it is is just that people just don't think that it's relevant. I think they don't uh, see how important it is. I think that they <laughs> subscribe to whatever their political party is and they don't care. Yeah. I know a lot of people are like that. Like I stand firm, dem democratic, 100% I stand firm. Yeah. Republican. Even when they're burning down the country. It's yeah. like, it's like, it's, it's, like, well, how about we just staying? look at like situation, yeah. circumstances, uh, results, make our, yeah, right. yeah like we'll make our, <laughs> Our judgments based on what this person is doing, what they have done, what they're yeah. capable of doing versus saying, I stand for this political mm -hmm. party and whatever they do, I stand with them because I'm this person. No, <laughs> no. you know, that's not <laughs> thinking for that's not thinking for yourself. That's not smart. That's not having an opinion. And if you can't if you don't no. stand for something, you'll what yeah. is that? Say if you don't stand for something, you will stand for stand for it. You'll lie. never you you lie for anything. Somebody knows, like right? Yeah. If you don't stand for something, you'll lie down for anything yeah how's it like go that. one you of you guys, guys you guys know. let us know we'll, we'll put it on the screen then he knows he's lying 30 plus years with a lot of main democrats mercy it's sad mm. <sighs> mm. which helps further prove that oh, biden's pause. right when he says it. so he switched parties was I, is that yeah. what you're saying megan really is that what i didn't i've heard that but i wasn't sure if that was true like he was. He was a Republican and maybe he became a Democrat. Oh boy. Hmm. I wonder how his kids are. Spark Brain said, let him lead the country. He did good raising his kids. Fall for anything. Oh yeah, if you don't yeah. stand for something, you'll you fall, fall for, for anything. anything. Thank, Thank you. you. I knew one of you guys. Thank you, names. Sandra. <laughs> you guys are so smart. Gia Org Gia stands my brain. <laughs> for organization, which helps further prove that Biden's right when he says Antifa is not an organization. Number nine. Biden says he's creating jobs. Well, according to the New York Post, while Trump was in office, there were a total of 152.5 million non-farm employees. Then the pandemic hit, and that number went down to 130.5 million. That's because many businesses were banned from operating for a prolonged period, which Biden seemed oddly stoked about. Uh, and now as businesses are open back up, there's a total of 150.9 million non-farm employees, wow. which is still short of the number from when Trump was in office. But Biden is saying this is from him creating jobs. <laughs> so the lesson we can learn here is the best way to create jobs is to tyrannically ban people from working and then eventually let them work again and call that job creation. It's kind of like the best way to feed hungry people is to take away people's food, and then once they're starving, give them some of their food back. Mm. Which Biden's kind of also in the process of doing that. Number two. Oh. This is what you always say. Create a problem and to fix a problem. Yeah. And then you say, look what I did. Yeah. And in all actuality, you just caused a lot of stress, yeah. a lot of pain, unnecessary pain, unnecessary mm -hmm. stress. Yeah. And then 
here comes your fix. And yeah. people literally fall it is for a, this It stuff. is a political move. It's called the Hegelian dialectic. And the idea is, um, it's called thesis, synthesis, and synthesis. No, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. The, I, in English terminology is action, reaction, solution. So you create a problem. Yeah, you did say that So before. you get a reaction, and out of the reaction is your initial goal from the very beginning is... And then you, you can insert whatever solution you have in place. You know, mm-hmm. you can see it played out in, I'm not getting into all the C word here, but when you look at like what happened in 9-11, that's like, boom, this happened. And then they say, these people did we- it. Mm-hmm. And then now they have a reason to say, we go going to war. But ultimately the goal was to get oil, you know? So he's like, so this happens all the mm-hmm. time among governors and leaders and everything. And when you look the digging, it was really like, no, they didn't really did anything to the buildings. When you study carefully what happened to those buildings, they were laced with bombs way before. This was like a demolition derby. This wasn't a plane that burned down buildings like that. And a lot of people from the buildings who came out and survived were trying yeah. to speak about them. They actually, some of them were killed, shot down. They started dying one after another. They were not allowed to testify. But I have those stuff on record. It shows that's not actually what happened. This was an inside job, not something from outside at all. It's been proven. It's really sad because pe- so many people die from these. Uh, thank you, Gia. Mm-hmm. It's all planned. And thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's all planned. There's another, like for... you said, there's a lot of intentionality in this stuff. It yeah. doesn't just happen, you know. Yeah. There's a war in Ukraine right now with Russia. You think it just happened? <laughs> no. Yeah. Somebody's mm. pushing some buttons behind the scene, it's... you know. People dying is just this never was horrible. Well. horrible. Yeah. Sandra, situational design. Situational yeah. design. All right. Let's go. Whew. Come on, boy. Bring me to a close. Ten. He calls the Hunter Biden laptop Russian disinformation. Now, this little lie, I'm sure, was innocent, and I'm also positive it had no influence over the presidential election. So while it's now been proven that the Hunter Biden laptop is real, I'm sure that any incriminating photos or emails linking Biden to illegal activity in Ukraine and China are still just like nothing but disinformation put there by the magical disinformation fairy. So you might want to just forget about the Hunter Biden laptop unless you want to experience the Clinton body count. You heard what this is about? The Hunter Biden laptop is... Yeah, it's, there's an illegal yeah, activity, the activity that went on between what he just said, Russia and China. Mm-hmm. That was, I didn't that know the depth of it. That was his no, son too. That was what? His Hunter is his son. So there was a lot of illegal stuff going oh, on. Oh, yes, I did hear about that. Yeah. Yes, 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 uh, yes. We have a visitor. Hi, babe. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going up by one more. And those are Biden's 10 biggest lies so far. <laughs> it was really hard to whittle the list down to just 10. And, and I mean that in the best way possible. But of course, all of Biden's lies are okay and aren't really his fault. Why is that? Because when you look at the symptoms of the medical condition called dementia, you'll see that along with problems communicating, memory loss and changes in short-term memory are prime symptoms. Mm -hmm. Not that Biden has any symptoms of dementia, but out of all the ones he does have, we can compassionately understand that when he's not telling the truth, he's not lying. He's just experiencing memory loss and changes in his short-term memory. Uh, and at times hallucinations, which is also a symptom. And he communicates those with diminished speech skills, also a symptom, while at times also experiencing the additional symptom of disorientation. So it's not his fault and we can trust him. Let's go Brandon, because remember, he once said that too. Let's go Brandon, I agree. That's one thing I agree with you about, Joe. Uh, Well guys. That one was different. Yeah, we got to was... gotta do some praying about this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. But it's good to know. Oh. Oh, wow, Megan. Mm. You know you know how many people were a part of that. Oh, the underage sex acts and that. It's so terrible. Hey. Say hi, Gia. Spark brain. Say, Say hi. hi, spark brain. Look, look at this camera. <laughs> he came to join us. Um, all right all right well uh guys uh not to go too deep into this and i think he did his job here 
he did his job here as far as exposing i got some things to need i need to check i can't run with this as all facts but i know jp oftentimes does his homework so i can understand where he's coming from but i'll tell you about another lie that i was speaking to a friend last night and just trying to get to an, an understanding of um he's an older gentleman and he's concerned about his health and he feels like he's about to die okay let's just put it that way that's kind of what it is that's really what it is but my my conversation with him was uh, trying to figure out what's going on with his mind and how he is thinking about heaven and stuff like that. And what I heard him said was something that everybody else like to say, which is a lie. It's one of the greatest lies plaguing the world right now. You want to know what that lie is? Okay, here is the lie. I asked him, yo, so... How do you go to heaven? How do you have the assurance you're going to be saved and stuff like that? Yeah. So his answer to that was, I just need to do, I need to let my good, right, overbalance my bads, which is very popular. That is actually a lie. And we can speak about Mr. Biden's <laughs> lies also but the greatest lie that the humanity is plaguing with right now it is the perception that if i'm good enough i'm gonna go to heaven and god is gonna look at how great of a person that i am and how many things i'm doing perfectly right and then he's gonna let me into the pearly gates that's what he was telling me and i was like bud i i'm gonna have to break your heart with this one he said really i said nah you believing a lie and he was like, really? That's a lie. I said, yeah. You cannot go to heaven. Neither could you be saved because you are good. You are saved because God is good. Salvation is not something you earn. It is something you receive from Jesus. It is a, it's a gift that God gives you. And I, tell, I quoted one verse and I said, uh, by all means, escape from that mentality quick. Uh, make yourself go to your house. And get on your knees because um, if since you're about to die and you believe it to be true you don't want to play with this knowledge because you're believing a lie and then um, what I shared with him was this passage here Romans 6 23 and we can go from there I love the lies concept but the greatest lie we have to worry about as humanity is this one you cannot save yourself because you are doing good enough works that is not in a Bible that is a pagan ideology. That is a false concept. All the religion outside of Christianity believe this. Christianity does not teach this. We teach what Jesus teaches, which is you are saved by grace through faith. It says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, here is the big word here, gift, is eternal life. How do you receive it? Through Jesus Christ your Lord. So the way I'm, I get to heaven, the way that I am saved, is not because I do good. It's not because I am good. It's not because I pay my taxes. It's not because I take care of my wife. I'm an awesome father. By all means, do these things and more. But these, these things cannot save you. You are saved because you have faith in Jesus. You accepted the gift of eternal life. You've accepted Christ in your heart as Lord and Savior. That is salvation. Amen. Everything else you do is a byproduct to that but they don't uh, add nor take away from what Christ has already done for you. And that was freedom. He started smiling when I shared this with him. He was like, what? I say, it's much easier than you think. You, you go in the wrong direction, buddy. You're doing it the hard way and you're still not going to make it. The easiest way to do it is to say, Lord, I'm a wretch. I'm a mess. I have sinned. Please save me by your grace. And he will do it. You have to understand what comes with that is such a burden for you life. Like yes, you begin to do good, your motives are different. Yeah. It's there's a joy in it, the stress that sometimes can come from it. And there's a lot of people who do good and they have zero stress with it and that just naturally exudes yeah. from them. They naturally have a certain level of compassion for people. Yeah. And they just do good for people. But when you experience doing good in Christ's eyes, yeah. mm. you don't even understand how much greater the reward is in yeah. that because yeah. now your motivation is different. It's not Absolutely. because you're going to get something from it or you don't have this thought in the back of your head, even if that's not what's motivating you. You don't have this thought like, this is what's going to get me in heaven. Mm -hmm. No, what you have is like, 
thank you, Father, for giving me the ability and the means to be able to do this for someone. That's right. And it, it changes. Becomes a joy. And it, and it might be a joy already for yeah. people. A lot of yeah. people do good for others because internally we all have a certain measure of faith. We all have a certain yeah. measure of good that is naturally in, in us. Not yeah. good, but faith. And yeah. what that causes us to do good things. Anything good that's in us comes from um, God, yeah, period. Yeah. So we all have a certain measure of that. And some people have more than others. That's yeah. why I always say like, don't be mad at people because your capacity to love and your mm -hmm. capacity to have compassion might be here and someone else's capacity might be here and they might be living up to it, but they haven't hit your standard yet. So, uh, and that's what gives that's us right. the ability to love people where mm -hmm. they're at Yeah. because we don't know where they're at. And yeah. while we might hit, have, have it here and not even having a relationship with God, just be that person who's more giving and understanding and more in tune with how people might be feeling and mm -hmm. caring for them. Someone else might be giving it their all, right. but they're only here. You don't know what life experiences they went through, there's where they grew up. Mm -hmm. So there's so it's so different. We don't know each person's capacity to love and to be loved and to receive love. Yeah. So with that being said, though, that's just where when you start, when you get with mm -hmm. God and you do good for people and you do those different things, it's just like there's just certain it's, it's a different it's a different experience it's, that you have. Yeah. I think the meaning behind your doing good also, it like does. you said, it changes yeah. completely. You don't do it for selfish reason. Some people do good because they just, just because. they want to they wanna do good. They just, just want to do good. Be, for, right. Just for the feeling of doing good. Some do good just to be acknowledged. But uh, when you are saved, the things that you do, it, you do it because of the love of God and the mm -hmm. love you have for your fellow man. It, it, it's not about doing it so I can get something in return. I do it because I love to do it, you know? And then you don't have a, you don't have a, you're not a respecter of person. No. And that's where I was going with that. Like you, you just do it freely for all people. Yeah. Because sometimes people do good for certain people who they have a certain feeling for, but then you just have that, you have that for all people because God works it in you, no matter what that person, where they're at in life. It's true. It's just powerful. It's beautiful.